Now, we are going to just break for normal programming now because there were two issues that I wanted to talk to this person about. Um, and he has made himself available to us, so I feel like we should go straight to him. You may be aware of the story from out of um, Spring Creek in Blenheim, where a chapter of Black Power have called him the NIGGA uh, branch or chapter of Black Power. In, and since January, police in the local community have tried to stop Black Power basically having a flag that says that and walking around wearing gang patches and say that they have been frustrated by the law. And I think that's wrong. And also, of course, it is Māori Language Week. What does that really mean to us? Is it anything but propagandising um, what some would say is a dying language? I hope it's not a dying language. And to discuss all this, we are joined now by the Race Relations uh, Commissioner, uh, Mr Meng Fu. Uh, Meng, kia ora. Welcome to the platform. Kia ora, kia ora. Is that you, Sean? Yeah, yep, we've got you loud and clear. Fantastic. Awesome. awesome. Now, now, Ming, I want to start with this story that got my blood boiling when I read it in the paper on the weekend. The story about the Black Power N, bad word, chapter that is flying a flag in lovely little Spring Creek in Marlborough. And despite your views, despite the views of police and the local community, there is nothing legally we can do about what is clearly a word with racist connotations being flaunted in public like that. You must be so frustrated with that. Oh, absolutely frustrated. And we, we support the police, we support the community in, and, and the wider community um, in seeking that people don't actually use the N-word anymore as we know what the connotations uh, from its history of slavery and, and derogatory uh, actions uh, towards black people in America. Um, so, yeah, our, our sort of hands are tied, but we hope that with the goodwill, we, you know, I, I've got some names now in the paper, um, and so that we can actually write to them and just ask them, and goodwill, will they actually pull this down? Because, you know, it's... Um, right in front of some preschools and um, in front of residential areas and, and people are just not happy, yeah. upset actually, very upset. Yeah. Now, but then again, the gang who have got the N-word on open display in Spring Creek, it's black power, right? So they've got the right yeah. to use the word and they are arguing, I think, actually, not the, the worst argument I've heard, that popular culture allows... African American artists in rap music and other music to frequently use the N word with each other. And if you are a yeah. black American or an Afro American, it's cool to use the N word, so they should be allowed to do it here. They say they're taking back the power of the N word. Well, that's the problem, you see. I mean, it's been popularized. And black people use that term to highlight their history. But you just imagine if um, anyone other than black using that word will be called racist. And we will be called other names as well. Um, we in New Zealand society, um, I think we hopefully are growing up. Um, and hopefully that we can actually not use those words. And, you know, we're, we're quite sensitive to words that actually have connotations of uh, oppression, uh, connotations of elimination of uh, one's culture. And so we've just got to be mindful of the fact that um, we are a changing society. And I'm, I'm not saying that we are woke, uh, but definitely uh, we just want to create harmonious communities right here in Aotearoa. I mean, plenty of people are going to call, call you woke and I'm probably one of them, but, but <laughs> I mean it in the <laughs> nicest possible way. Hey, why don't you go down to Spring Creek? Why don't you knock on the door of this Black Power chapter and say, stop being such a-holes? Well, it could be a thing because I'll be in Nelson um, one day soon. Well, Ming, I'd pay money. I'd pay money to see what happened if you did knock on their door and tell them that. I suspect, actually, they'd be quite reasonable about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think it's the way of going about it and... Um, yeah, knocking on somebody's door would be a good start, but it's um, a lot of people are fearful. Um, a lot of people feel that if they're 
the, their name is exposed that there might be some uh, intimidation um, but that's all supposition at the moment so when I'm in Nelson next um, I will um, go there Alright, um, Ming the other thing I wanted to talk about you apparently so I'm told though I didn't get the memo because I don't, don't take government money in media um, apparently it's Maori Language Week Yes, it is, and um, as much as a lot of um, a lot of um, you know people are encouraging Maori uh, people to speak Maori, um, my encouragement for those who don't, uh, firstly, is to acknowledge that the Maori language exists in the first place, and that there is value in um, the, the Maori language, but also to pronounce start pronouncing the uh, Māori words correctly. Um, that would be a first start. I mean, I've always made, um, had the call with many others that um, Māori should be compulsory, at least in uh, primary school. And um, they say, oh, there's not enough teachers. And I'm saying, well, part of the teacher's professional development should be the first year that you actually teach the children to pronounce words correctly. Um, second year, like words you like some usk, research in history. Would you do that for words like usk? Would you get people to pronounce English correctly too? Yep, yep. There's many uh, dialects and tones of English as well. Um, you just need to go around the world and Americans, Canadians, New Zealanders, Australians, Irish, we all have different um, tones to the different words. Mm. I'm going to put it to you, Ming, and here's just a hypothetical. That Maori Language Week, in a context where many New Zealanders, and I'm going to say many New Zealanders without a voice in mainstream media, um, I guess react and feel threatened, for whatever reason, by a, uh, the renaissance, the government-funded renaissance of Maori language. I'm going to say that I would feel that Maori Language Week has almost become counterproductive and we might have reached a tipping point where left to its own devices organically the Maori language is going to save itself or will be saved. Do we still need to have this emphasis on it and why? Uh, you, you still need the illumination of uh, te reo Maori um, in Maori language week in actual fact uh, Maori say well why don't we speak it every day. Um, we can't let anything um, left to be um, organically improved in Aotearoa because it will disappear. It's like use it or lose it. And, um, you know, I'm really happy with firms. Yeah. How many people are firms, speaking? What percentage of the doing, population are fluent right makers. now? Sorry? What, pop, what, do we know what, what, what um, proportion of the, of the country are fluent in Te Reo right now? Yeah, probably about 10%. Okay, and what of Māori themselves, if we're going to identify um, people by ethnicity? One, they say one in four of our children um, are fluent in Māori, so that's 25% of the children, which are probably around about 300,000 um, children that go to school, uh, that Māori kids that go to school, and so um, at least 100,000. So that know, seems I mean, pretty good. Yeah, and I'm 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 here at the um, English language um, partners today, and as soon as I got in the lift, people were saying Morena, Morena, Kilda, yeah. and I'm saying that's fantastic. So why you know, is it fantastic be... though, Ming? Why is it any more or less fantastic than G'day or Good Morning? Well, it's, at least you can say both. Yeah, Isn't but why is that so? Okay, so you're saying it's not so. France, so let's go, clarify. Bonjour, saying Morena is Morena is no more fantastic than saying good morning. Well, anyone that says good morning, kia ora, thank you is fantastic. Now, Great. Please, okay, so there's nothing specifically spoken. <laughs> so there's nothing specifically wonderful about the Maori language compared with any other. All languages should be valued, and more particularly... Yeah, well, and so the answer to my question is Maori no, not is particularly. A official language. Sign language is yeah. great. Yeah. English is great as well. So is Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, though I hear Chinese is really hard to learn. Um, I think anything is hard to learn. 
if you don't put your mind to it. Yeah. Well, you've got to have a if reason, you don't learn, you? One can actually take it up quite easily. Yeah, you've got to have a reason to learn a language, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. And I've got to be honest. I've got to be you honest. Have a genetic makeup that you, yeah, yeah. a genetic makeup that um, will will help you learn the language quicker. Okay. Um, me, I don't have a reason to learn Maori really, um, and I use more and more Maori words as they as languages combine and come together. I think I speak yeah. Kiwi English, uh, and that's yeah. changing and evolving all the time. Whether or not the government spends a few million dollars telling me that it should. Um, I really hope you do get to visit uh, Spring Creek and get them to take the en- the Black Power branch there to take that end sign down because no matter whether you're a Tereo speaker or an English speaker or a Chinese speaker, it's bloody offensive, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make every effort when I'm there. Thank good, you very much, George. Good on you, Ming. Uh, okay. Kapai. Bye-bye. That is Ming Fu. He is the Race Relations uh, Commissioner. I did ask him, what's so wonderful about the map? Well, all languages are wonderful, he said, and this is the thing. Keep on asking, why does that make me a better New Zealander? It doesn't particularly. Makes you a multilingual New Zealander, which is a good thing.